Welcome to M and M. I am Michael in the M, and I am Michelle in the M. And we are here to talk to you about men and women. Men and women. And we're going to talk about something that is very important: roles. Ooh, roles. Roles. And like I got sausage rolls. No, no. <laughs> Don't listen to society. Society is saying, uh, don't get into a relationship with a man when you're too young. You need to go to Ibiza. You need to get your job. You need to get your career. You need to be equal to men. You need to get your PhD. You need to get your house. You need to get all these things and then settle down when you're 33. And by the time you settle down, you don't need a man because you got everything a man could have given you. Mm. And there's this whole narrative of like, hey, let's get rid of this patriarchal system. But- what I'm seeing is most men, most women want a leading, strong man to look after them. Mm-hmm. And society is telling women to be men, to settle down when you're like 35 years old, 40 years old. I'm not saying if you're 35 or 40, there's anything bad with it. But I'm saying, hey, why don't you make a decision a lot sooner to be a wife, to have that relationship early and stop trying to be men. Mm. Men are the ones who should work their tails off to get the job and get the car and get the house that they can provide. But society is telling women to do that. And I think that's hurting their, their understanding of roles. Mm. And society is telling men that women uh, don't need to be taken care of. I actually think men, I think I actually think that men are confused, to be honest. I don't think men really know what's going on. I think that men feel like they're in between a rock and a hard place. If they're too nice to women, they're not being leaders. If they're not Venus. nice to women, they are being chauvinistic. So men are like, you know what? I don't know what to do. Sister, you tell me what to do. I'll be whatever you want me to do. And that doesn't, right? That doesn't go anywhere. So I actually don't think society is saying too much about men. Yeah. And they're just sort of saying men figure it out and just be sort of am- am- uh, amoebas. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the problem that, that it, cause you have, when you have the Bible, you can see what's going on. The attack on society always starts with the women. It never starts with right. men. It's always started about in Genesis, started started it? in Genesis. And it's always about keeping the men silent. If you look at Genesis chapter three, wow. we think that things that are happening right now, are just some brand new thing. No, Satan's plan to destroy families and destroy the happiness that women want is to silence men. Mm. So from the beginning of time, you see what happened in the garden. Who was silent? Adam. Adam. Who was deceived? Eve. Eve. Mm. Now, everyone argues, hey, how come he wasn't leading? He should have stepped up. That is true. But if you're going to really take out a society, it starts by helping the women to embrace the role of men and helping men to embrace the role of women. So you could argue that true feminism began in Genesis chapter 3, mm. where she says, I'm not going to listen to no man. I don't need a man. And when, when she did that, she started talking to Satan mm-hmm. and listening to his version of family, mm-hmm. his version of life. And what makes, I believe, men um, just major, as they say nowadays, simps, mm. is the fact that they just sit there and watch women try to be a role that God did not give them. Try to be mm. mom, try to be dad, try to be dad. Look at all the athletes. They get on and say, I want to thank my mom. Where's your dad? I want to thank my mom. Where are the men? Right. Where are the men? We, we got to step up. I, I, I feel very strongly about uh, men stepping up and being the men they need to be and not just sitting there being silent why Satan really attacks our women. Why do you think that is, though? Why do you think men sit and stay silent? Pride. You think it's pride? I think, I think pride is one. I, I agree with you. I think there's a confusion, and confusion is the devil. Men don't know what to do, and I think until they go back to God, they won't know what to do. Mm. Because society is filling us with everything. Society is saying, hey, be Andrew Tate and just really diss women and claim your, your masculinity by being so strong. And then you got the beta males that are like, okay, whatever you say, honey. So you got these overly alphas and these overly betas. And then the guys in between are like, I don't want to be overly alpha and like be super disrespectful. You got the, the beta guy who's just like, please go on a date with me. And, 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 and Satan's like, yeah, this is exactly what I love. Right. And the issue is you're never going to have a truth that can resonate until you go back to God. Right. So speaking of God, what, what kind of roles do you think God has for men and women? I think, Not think. What, but what, do you, what does the Bible say? 
Well, I have to, I mean, I want to give my soapbox without applying this to myself. I think the first thing that has to happen for us to understand roles is men have to reclaim our families. We got to reclaim our families. We have to say, hey, things are bad. No more silence. No more silence. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to take responsibility and uh, take mm-hmm. care of my family, take right. care of my responsibility. I'm going to go back to work. That was the first thing God gave Adam. Mm-hmm. Go back to work. I'm going to work my job. I'm going to have a good relationship with God. And the Bible says that once he had a good job, men, we need good jobs. <laughs> once he had a good relationship with God and a good job, and he was secure, meaning he, he wasn't looking for a marriage. He wasn't looking, hey, I need to get married. He was so secure with his job and his life that he was ready to take on that responsibility. I feel like we got a lot of men that aren't secure Mm. because they don't have a good career. They don't have purpose. They don't have a good relationship with God, so they're not secure. And the Bible says that once he was there, then God said it's not good for a man to be alone. Mm -hmm. And God brought that new relationship. So I think men got to go back to old school, work the job. Uh, relationship with God, build their confidence, build their confidence. Get a trade, a and it's, skill. It's, if you ain't got a good job, if you don't have a good relationship with God, oh, it's good to be alone. Yeah, you need to be alone with yourself to learn how to be a man. So figure that it out. to figure it out, so that you can really provide for your. So that's what I think. I think we got to go back to taking full responsibility for where the world's at. Mm-hmm. Men, men do. Men. What can women do to to understand their role so they don't try to. So they don't buy into the Kool-Aid that the world's selling, saying, hey, you need to be as strong as men. Like, hey, how come you don't? We need equal pay and equal. No one's saying that those things aren't good. But I think the underlying narrative is, hey, woman, you're not good enough being a woman. Be a man. Right. That's, That's a lot of pressure. The, yeah, it's a lot yeah, of pressure. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. You, you got to have your, your workout. You got to eat low carbs. You got to be in shape. You got to take care of the kids. You got to look like this IG model and make the same amount of money. I mean, it's just, I think it's the wrong message. Right. It's the wrong message. And it and it's forcing women to be in the wrong role. It's kind of like, I want you to be a man, woman, but be a woman. Right. I agree. Yeah, the world wants us, I think, in efforts to have women have the equality, that is, which is not a bad thing to get no. the same pay and all of those things, but we just don't have the capacity, I think, um, to uh, do it all. So we don't have the capacity to raise children, have children, work full time, take care of the house, and do all the things that a woman needs to do. Because, and I think then people would argue in a marriage, you know, the man needs to help with that. But I think what we've seen in our marriage is it's better you take the lion's share of the out work and I take the lion's share of the housework in a sense. And it's just that, that, that dividing of roles. But see, and that's where society is really playing on the weaknesses uh, of, 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 of each of us, men and women, because they're telling women you're less than by being an amazing exactly. wife, by being at home, home, by staying at home. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're less than you're, you, you know, and they're really eradicating the natural nurturing, encouraging, warm, peaceful nature that women have. And now women are having to get out there and hustle and fight and argue and bicker and, mm-hmm. and be CEOs and CFOs. And sure, you can do that. But the underlying message to this thing, to this podcast is like, where are our roles? Mm-hmm. Are the men taking the lion's share? Is most of the pressure in the family on me? Right. Are most of the hard things coming my way? Right. Is the person that's up earliest and go to bed late the man? Or is it the is it mom right. doing it all? I think it's wrong. We put too much pressure on women. Right. We got to take more on as men. Yeah, I think um, definitely the society has really uh, put men as I said, into a very confusing role where they have to be an amoeba. They don't know whether to be. Like you said, there's men that are over-masculine, um, the alpha male, and then there's the better male, but then there's the Jesus male, which is the best of both. And um, you're going to talk a little bit about that. But um, I think ultimately my role, definitely that I've seen as a, with having a son and also being married is to be a fan I think men. You're you're my fan. I'm, I'm a fan. You got to be a fan. <laughs> uh, I don't want the compliments, not at all. <laughs> I don't want any. Don't I, I take pride in my humility, babe? Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You're awesome. We need leadership. We I I go to bed better when you're home, 
right? Because of that sense of protection mm. that that you that a man gives gives the family. Mm. And um, yeah, when yeah, we're man, about our roles, if, if you're we're down, at peace. If the, if the, if 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 there's a criminal. You know, don't, honey, you want to get that? No. I mean, you, you know. We don't, I don't go, hey, that's not my role. Well, that's my role. <laughs> right. Right? We know clearly that, yes. babe, you better get that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's ever downstairs? You're bigger right? than me. Right. But, um, yeah, I think um, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And I think, you know, hey, Jesus is the alpha. <laughs> mm. uh, he's the true alpha, dare we say alpha male. But I, I, I like what you said we were talking earlier about. You know, the world is like saying be overly alpha or or and then you got the other ones that overly beta, and yet the real man is like Jesus. Right. Um, who who had That's the strength the of 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 confidence and masculinity, and I'm a man and I like to drive my, you know, I want I'm driven. But also, even in the Bible, the Bible says Paul, feminine qualities are biblical in men. Because Paul the apostle says, we were we loved you so much that we were delighted to share you not only the gospel but our lives as well. We loved you so much we treated you as a mother cares for her children. Mm-hmm. Paul the apostle, this is a guy who got his head cut off for Jesus Christ. Wow! And yet he had motherly characteristics. That's so I think amazing. as men we we it's we have feelings. We can have emotions. We're not to say I'm not saying we need to be all up in our emotions all day long. But I do want to get rid of this narrative that men can't be emotional, men can't feel, men, men can't be nurturing, men can't be some of the things that are really uh, very godly. They may not work in the world or in the corporate world. They may not work at the nightclub you go to. But let me tell you something. They work when it comes to having a long-time, uh, faithful, powerful relationship. And um, it mm-hmm. is part of the role of a man to have those those emotional qualities, because that comes from the Bible. Jesus said emotion. Jesus cried. I mean, can you imagine Jesus walking around here all angry? <laughs> God actually uses a lot of feminine analogies. Yep. Um, he, he does. actually says in Isaiah that how can a woman, how, how, he uses the example of a woman nursing a child and says, how could a mother forget her child? How could I forget you, Israel? And another time he uses an analogy of being like a midwife uh, on giving birth, or actually giving birth. He, so he, God uses a lot of analogies of even, femininity and nurturing Qualities. So, and a man and woman were made in God's image, Mm. right? Yeah, and even the word you shared with me that was very convicting because it says when Adam created man or God created man, then he created a helper. The word helper is the Hebrew word Ezer. Ezer. That's the word that God uses to help Israel. So women are like are are not just like these docile. I think we think of helpers as maids. It's actually nothing like that. It's the saving help. It's the hand of God. I wouldn't be who I am without right. you. Right. The saving help of a woman can can actually save the marriage, can save the family. But, um, yeah, I, and I often think, think on the flip side, you know, the Bible talks about very strong women that had leadership potential. Obviously, everyone loves to talk about Deborah, but Lydia was a businesswoman that uh, actually was the was spearheaded the first church in Europe. Yeah. That Paul the met very at her pers- house. Exactly. She and was she- very persuasive. She was able to persuade Paul, mm-hmm. who was a very strong woman, strong man. Yeah, and he valued her, but at the end of the day, she submitted to him. Absolutely. And she was a fan of Paul. Right. She wasn't like, hey, we're in, you know. So right. so I think roles are huge. I think we need to get back to the Bible being the standard, solidify that men lead, women are supportive. Uh, and that's the only way that we can really make mm-hmm. it happen. Hey, guys, thank you for coming to the show. If you like what you saw, subscribe or like. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>